this slide a little bit closer to me. that my brother, who was in the military, asked me, 
who said that a seventh child? That's a problem for seven. But I'm excited about being here today, and the question is asked, why are you interested in this position? I'm interested in this position again, because in 2015, I was elected as commissioner for Prince War II. During that time, I started with my, with my uh, team, started working on the rebuilding of Prince Hill because it was in 2016 that Hurricane Matthew came in and tried to destroy our town again. We have accomplished many things. Why am I interested in, in this position? Because we have accomplished many things. We rebuilt our town hall. We, we, rebuilt, we, we rebuilt the senior center and it's most beautiful high in the air. We have gone and replaced uh, pipes under the ground that were not operating appropriately. We have uh, rebuilt uh, floodgates. We have also, for the first time in the history of Prince Hill, have a youth, uh, uh, had a youth summit, this uh, youth program this summer. We want to make sure that we reach out to our youth and let them understand that they are important. Why, do I, why am I interested in this position? There are many other things I could uh, uh, tell you about, but I'm reminded of Nehemiah who said, because I'm on the wall now, and I can't come down, because I got a work to complete, and I'm one who always likes to complete something that I started. If I don't complete it in my lifetime, I want to make sure that I pass the baton to someone who will. What is my main priority since I'm reelected? I plan to bombard the powers that be. I plan to go against the powers that be along with my team until we get that dike erected like it should be. So that Princeville and the surrounding communities won't have to run every time it rains too hard. What actions will I, will I take with my position that will enhance the quality of life of the citizens? Get the dike fixed. Get houses, housing affordable housing, and make sure that we are safe, protected, happy, and whole. Thank you.
for the redevelopment of the downtown area. Um, my most accomplishment is I um, suggested that we, uh, a half a million dollar project that's in East Hall Road. Uh, it's not completed, but it's a splash pad. Because I got tired of hearing that the, fun the funding was bad. Okay. What action you take to continue to enhance the quality of life of citizens? I'll continue the good work that I do do for everyone, not just certain people.
be concerned about them and to take that back to the people. So I'm concerned about these two things. I'm concerned uh, about the neighborhood. We don't have uh, the loud music or the pondering on that street. Uh, it has been, believe me, it has been. So, but anyway, um, it was addressed and nothing was done. But however, I'm elected, something will be done. Thank you. I think one of my main concerns is the involvement of our youth. If we don't get our youth more involved in the fabrics of the community, the rebuilding of the, of the town, our community, understanding what it takes to be a community activist, we are setting ourselves up for failure. So I believe that my main concern and my main focus, one of my main focus is to begin to get the youth involved, help them to understand where we, how we got to where we are, and so that they can understand when it's time for them to take the time, then they'll be able to carry on and won't lose that.
Dr. Perdon comes to the meeting, we don't know if it's because of us, and I guess that's something we need to look into. Maybe the approach needs to be different. But I think that those things that arise, we need to take care of them immediately, or at least respond to them immediately and say that um, we'll, look at, we'll take a look at it and see what we can do about it. Absolutely, I will continue to do what I, uh, to do those things so that we can make sure we are meeting as much as possible the needs of the citizens. And if it's a need that cannot be met, it certainly is not because we don't want to do it, but it is absolutely because of something that is not time for it, or maybe not appropriate.
good emotion gets guard balance. I know as a substitute teacher in two schools here at Tallboro, I wonder sometimes about what they do have in their book bag. I wonder sometimes if they're disturbed enough to find a weapon or gun in their home that has not been properly sealed up, put up, away from the child and they bring it to school. Sometimes it has happened that a child has brought a weapon in to say, I was just playing. I just want someone to see it. But that, I feel like it falls on the parent or parent or wherever this child lives, that that child should not be able to get a weapon to bring to school. Again, every time you turn that TV on, someone's son, daughter, father, sister, someone has been shot, someone has been killed for no reason at all. The police cannot do it all. We have to do it ourselves. So, you know, let us be very careful about a gun in our home, not only for the children, but ourselves. We can get it and it go off the wrong way and then your bond, you know, so be careful. Uh, about the guns that you do have in your home. A lot of times you have to have a gun in your home to protect you from someone coming into your home and doing whatever they want to do. But I just say, again, just be careful. Uh, put the guns up from children. Put them up that they are safe when you go and get them.
it's all about being respectful to one another. Don't have to be the person that you want me to be. I think I have to be me. And so if I speak on something, I have an opinion about a thing, it's because I believe the same way. And I shouldn't be condemned on me uh, for feeling like that's the real or ridicule or whatever. And I don't, you know, I don't put any value in what people say about me that's not true. Like I said, everybody's entitled to an opinion. I believe in me and I love me. <laughs> so, you know, and you know, and I'll tell people who you are, so if you want to be a rough owner, be the best one you're gonna be, but you're not gonna deal with me. You're not gonna deal with me. We're gonna shut this down. Just leave it alone. And I'm gonna still love me in the way the name of Jesus because that's what I'm gonna be happy that I'm not like you. Okay. So if it's contention, you're a contentious person, I know how to deal with you. I'm back. So if you're not gonna be nice to me, I'm not gonna hang around with you next. If you don't agree, I'm going to treat you right, because I have a higher power in us, too. So I don't have something to people are treated nice, purposely being nasty and rude and disrespectful to other people. And that's just how I roll. And so I don't know if you have to start to think about a lot of things, but I'm going to be fair. I'm going to be right and move on. Like I said, if I'm wrong, I can't get to that. Thank you. I see you in the who has run for office, is running for office, and politics for a long time, you have to have thick skin mm -hmm. because you're going to be poked and prodded by folks that you know, folks that you don't know. But what you can't do is take it personally. That's right. And just as she said, everybody has their own opinion. Doesn't mean yours is right and mine is wrong or vice versa. So I take it with a grain of salt. And if you took it to me with anything, that's okay too. But don't get angry at me because I disagree with you. And a lot of that takes place. Uh, it, it, it amazes me how adults sometimes have a, a primary mentality when they say, uh, you don't agree with me, so I'm mad with you. And you're sitting on the board, supposed to be working together, and you got um, one of your comrades, you know, rolling their eyes like a person. <laughs> and, you know, if those things happen, I just have to compose myself and say, Jesus, take it easy. Mm -hmm. Because if you don't, then you have a clown show, and that's something that I don't tolerate. I don't want to be a part of it. Some you just have to take it with a grain of salt and move on. Let people be who they want to be, but know who you are, and don't let them pull you out of character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I uh, read the flowers. I believe in my own self. Um, I believe in this team. I plan to work well with this team. If there is a disagreement, I believe we should talk it out and resolve so that that disagreement can become agreeable. Um, we should not, as adults, go out, scandalize one another's name because your question that you asked, you know, you did not get the right answer for it. We should not tear each other down for that reason. We need to build each other up. For example, today, um, when I met Leanne for the first time, I was wondering about Leanne um, because we both are running on board too. And when I met her in here today, I honestly goodness, it was a strong bond. It was like I have known her for a long time. I just met her tonight, but it was such a strong bond between the two of us. And we talked over there on the end about certain issues, and we both agreed on the same issue. We didn't even know that. But I do say once again, we have to know who we are, what we can do. We are not here to tear each other down, but if there is something wrong, and it is not right, then let us correct it in a manner and a decent way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that was really good. That was right on time with the question. Um, yeah, you just can't take it personal. Everyone's going to talk, like I said, you take it with a grain of salt. You got to let it roll off your back. You're in the limelight. You're, uh, you're a voice. You're, you're trying to be that out. So it's going to be, it comes with the territory. So you're going to have to be ready for it. Um, someone wants to drag my name through the mud. It just doesn't, it's not the first rodeo. Whatever. Life goes on, the sun's gonna come up 
gentlemen of our world love you back. Be respectful of each other. You know, we're all human. We all bleed the same. We all see each other at food lines. You know, um, it's a small community. Yeah, everyone disagrees with the timeline, but I feel like that communication uh, can help you solve problems. Um, some problems may not have a solution for it, you know, so press forward. I think detachment is should be practiced more. Learn how to really detach from some things that are no longer serving. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, thank you. Next question from the audience. I hear a lot about getting the youth involved. But realistically, how can you do that if the parents are not involved or concerned? I believe you can do it simultaneously sometimes. Getting the youth involved is very important. If their parents are not the buy-in to what the youth needs to do, you still don't want to just stand back and not do anything. Just like we're talking about the school, because I don't have a child in the school, does that mean I don't have a need to go there and and, and, and uh, read to them, read with them? Just because you know, I don't have a child, if I see a child doing something mischievous, does that mean I don't have a, a, a not a right so much, but she have a heart to want to say something to that child? Getting the youth involved is very important. And say that child could not change that parent's mind about something or have that parent that once that parent see that the child is involved maybe I need to get involved but one thing I have noticed when you involve young people in something the parents somewhat support that especially something that may be an extracurricular activity which I think is kind of sad for the school system that we don't have that much anymore but whenever I notice that like Christmas time when children have a, a Christmas program, the parents come out. They may not come out to a teacher's meeting, but they show up for those, those quarrels and they show up for the sports and activities and things like that. So whatever it takes to get the camaraderie, let's try to do it. it may not be my child, but be somebody's child. Or she's somebody's child.
first part on your for his this is one of your handicap months. So I involved him in everything possible in the music. And it was, you know, we were from tribe anyway. So um and as a IDB coordinator, I go to the gym and take shoes right out the bag, just for if you have a different area of some sort. So I really enjoyed um watching that program grow. And one of the hardest things as um, a council member in Park Select, parents won't even sign a permission slip. They won't sign a permission slip for the child to participate in programs at school, and they won't sign for them to do something in the committee, but they won't want them to go. And um, we can do all we can. So sometimes we'll fall short, sometimes we'll be successful. So just continue to reach out to our youth. It all you, no matter who the child they are, if you see something in them, try to, you know, maybe see how you can be effective and help them nurture and grow that whatever it is that they need to grow. We now say that you have a lot of children who are raised with children, so they weren't taught themselves uh, about teaching or about politics and a lot of things. So they, the parents themselves, don't know how to pass this information on or to empower their kids to be interested in these types of activities. So it's up to, I guess, those who are in positions where we can offer support to our communities and to our schools and encourage our kids to read and be involved in extracurricular activities at school, it's up to us to sort of um, push these kids into that role because the parents, a lot of them really don't care and don't know how to do it themselves anyway. So um, if we can encourage kids to be involved in politics, I remember years ago we had no Democrats. I don't even know what happened to that program. Um, our uh, county organizations could initiate that type of uh, organization again for young kids to get them involved in learning about politics and about voting and registering and that type of thing. That would be very helpful. But as the mayor said, COVID will stop, put a stop to a lot of things that we need to get back into. Sure. I hear a lot about getting the youth involved, but realistically, how can we do that if the parents are not involved or concerned?
It's not important when you got a camera tear to an all the time. Because you got to put just as much into it so you can be comfortable in that house as the person that built it. So we got to find out whether or not the houses are really affordable. Yes, we need, we need housing. That's a shortage. But I think we need to look at what we're allowing people to pull up, put out people again, and say that they're affordable. Maybe affordable for you, but you got a thousand of them coming up. Can't be so affordable to that one that can barely make ends meet. And their more their mortgage or their rent is almost more than what yours is. Affordable housing, need it, or the here. I don't think so. Yeah. Um
or listen to younger people. Um, someone can come in and build affordable homes, but people are not. Uh, the rent isn't raised because they get a better job or they get a dollar raised in their job. It seems like if the homes are based on income, anytime you make a little bit of more money, then here comes your real estate person ready to take that extra money away. So you're sort of caught between a rock and a hard place.
things that I can't do. And you know, politicians who make promises to do this and do that, then when they get in those seats, they see that it's not as easy as they thought it would be. Um, so I spend the time not making promises to anyone, but always taking an interest in any concern that a citizen has and doing the best that I can to resolve those issues with the resources that we have available. I want to say thank you for having the opportunity to express my um, reason for wanting to stay in office. And I'm grateful for um, my constituents in my ward and other wards that rely on me for their confidence or they call me all the time. But I appreciate being able to help them. And I want to tell them thank you for their support. Um, I don't make promises. I'm not going to make any promises at all in your age. I mean, I just, I'm here to serve my board, serve my town, and just be the best cheerleader for the town that I can be. I would like to say thank you to the committee, and thank you to Ms. Martha Johnson for calling and letting me know about this. I am elated to be here. This is my first time running. I do plan, yes, I am elected. My very best to be very honest with the people to work with not only in Ward 2, but with all of the boards here, work with everyone so that we can grow Edgecombe County even further than what it is right now. I love living here. Um, I've been here a few years, a little 20 plus years I've been here now, but I love every bit of it and I have enjoyed working here as well. Thank you, Chairman Malik, for giving us this opportunity. One of the things that I've noticed this evening is that there is a plumb line. All of us have the same desires. All of us seem to have the same goals set. All of us seem to have one thing in mind, and that is protecting us the greatest. A community can be no stronger than a county. A county can be no stronger than a state. A state can be no stronger than the federal government. We need to make sure that we Vote, vote for me if you feel like I can do the job, but I just want you to vote when it comes to primary elections because that's how we get the resources that we need to be the great community, the great county, the great town, the great city, the great state that we need to be. So we need to make sure that as a result of where we're trying to get to, we need to look at where the money comes from and make sure that we get that, the respect comes from make sure that we get that so that we can be great for our citizens and for ourselves but we are citizens as well i think we forget that sometimes thank you very much to all candidates let's give them a round of applause schedules to be here uh, on behalf of the Edgecombe County Human Relations Commission, we wish you the best of luck with your campaign. At this time, um, if it's permissible with the Vice Chair, uh, Ms. Martha Johnson, I'd like to yield um, for 30 seconds to Representative Shelley Willingham, then yield to our County Manager, and if you would close up for us, Vice Chair, I'd really appreciate it. In that order.
be able to be here tonight. I've been so encouraged by all the thoughts and wonderful ideas that all of you have been going to let you know that for those of you who will remain in office after the election or gain a new office after the election, we here from the county have to part with you in your respective positions in your town and municipality and uh, to help serve our citizens. So thank you all for being here.